Well, Father, once again, Father, we thank you for this this day, another opportunity um, you have given us men um, to rejoice and and give you some praise and and just to to, to be about your business today. Uh, we don't do it as religious people, but we do it because we love your Son Jesus Christ. And so, yeah. our prayer this this Saturday morning is as we look uh, at. Uh, this first Thessalonians chapter five that uh, you will open our minds, you will shed some light, you will illumine our hearts, and so that we not only learn something, but we'll be able to take it and apply it to our, our daily walk. Um, this is what we know that you called us to do. We thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Go ahead and get started, brother. Okay. So brothers, I was just kind of thinking about a passage of scripture that we can use for this morning's devotion. And if you go over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we look at, let me see, verse 16 and 17, and even 18, 15, 16, well, 16, 17, and 18, um, I, I believe that we can find something this morning that will really help us um, as we go um, through this weekend on to the new year. And so in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, depending on your <laughs> translation that you're reading, um, I have the King James, rejoice evermore is verse 16. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. And in verse 18, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And so just, just for this, this short devotion, I like to speak from just a subject of the will of God for man, the will of God for man. And brothers, this is very important because depending on uh, where you fellowship, where you worship, where you hang out, um, de depends where, depending on what, where you grew up at, uh, depending on what you're into, what hobbies, uh, you, you can find a whole bunch of different, uh, I won't say answers, but a whole bunch of opinion, conjecture on what is the will of God for man. And here it is that we have in this first Thessalonians, and just to give you just a little bit of background, in this first Thessalonians, this particular church was faithful to Christ. This particular church, because they were faithful to Christ, they were experiencing much persecution, <laughs> suffering, trials, yeah. troubles. Um, also, in addition, they had some concerns. Um, and so the Apostle Paul, he is addressing their concerns. One of their concerns is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, they had a lot of loved ones that have went on and they had some questions about that. And so the Apostle Paul, he addresses those things in this letter um, to, the, the, his, to the believers in Thessalonica. And so some of the things like suffering and trials and troubles, and, and that is something that we actually experience today. Um, you don't have to go too far in, in, with, through the week to, to have a trial or some type of trouble. And we recently just got out of the pandemic. I think we're still in it in some form, probably just because you look at the numbers, there's still people um, getting affected and people dying. Um, but whatever the case is, you, we all can agree that even though we celebrated Christmas, for a lot of us, it, it was not so merry. It's, it's Merry Christmas uh, when you think about the birth of Christ, but if you celebrate this Christmas and your family size has decreased, it could cause some sorrow. Mm -hmm. um, just recently that my best friend, his, his mother went on to be with the Lord and we had to uh, funeral, funeralize her. We, we buried her several days before Christmas. And so that, that was very tough. That was tough. But in, in any event, we have something, some encouragement. And this is what I shared with my best friend that I don't have that experience I still, both of my parents are living, Brother Randy. Now he mm -hmm. lost both of his. So it's nothing that I can really say along those lines because I don't know what it feels like to lose parents. But even if I did ha have lost some parents, 
what is, how do I know what I'm telling him if it's outside of the word of God? How do I know that's going to be helpful to him? So I have found that the word of God is all sufficient. And so here it is in the midst of trials, in the midst of troubles, in the midst of tribulation, all those terms are interchangeably, but they do have um, some different nuance in scripture. But in event of all that, Paul, he writes, and he used some strong language in verse 16. Brothers, he said, rejoice evermore. Rejoice, mm -hmm. rejoice. And you might be asking the question, well, how can I rejoice in a time of trouble? How can I rejoice in my loss of my love? Well, how can I rejoice in my change is strange? <laughs> mm -hmm. How can I rejoice um, in, in, in something in I'm not sure if, if I'm gonna have a job next month or, or what, how can I rejoice? Well, what's interesting with this word is, this is rejoicing and delighting in the favor of the Lord. Okay, let me say that again. This Amen. rejoicing is not based on um, your circumstances, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's based on rejoicing in one who was able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ever asked or think. It, it is based on one who said, let there be light, and there was light. Uh, it is based on our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer. So uh, rejoice is this word, and, and then it's some strong language, brothers. Uh, this is this is not a suggestion. Uh, it is it's, it's in an imperative. It's a command. And, and not only is it in the command, but it's something that we ought to do consistently, continuously. Um, the verbal action that, that the Apostle Paul uses here, it's, it's, it's implied to, it implies to us that this is something that's daily, you know, rejoice. And, and, and it makes sense because we know what the psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise mm -hmm. shall continually be in my mouth. You know, we, we know Psalm 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Uh, we, we know, we, we know what scripture has to say, but sometimes putting in practice what scripture has to say. And, and this is why I titled this the will of God for man. He, he, he gives us, Paul, he writes, and he gives us some strong language here. It's a strong volitional request. If men are, if we are going to be successful, if we are going to be in the will of God, right. uh, we, we have to put this in practice. Uh, you know, and then verse 17, let me read verse 17, pray without ceasing. I mean, <laughs> these, are, these verses, two words in verse 16 and and, and uh, three words in verse 17, and really in the Greek New Testament, it's two words there, but in, in, in your translations, that the make it make sense to us is pray without ceasing. And so we understand that, and that's some strong language, the, the, the pray. It's also a command. Uh, it, it's also something that we ought to continuously do, and we, are, we always all, always do it. And, and brothers and sisters, this is not, not brothers and sisters, but brothers, this is this is not uh, something um, that we do as men, and we walk around and we just with our Bibles and praying. And we look real religious. I believe what the Apostle Paul has here, despite the circumstances, the situations, the trials, despite the journey that God has allowed us to walk through, because if if we're going to be in the will of God, there there's going to be some valley like experience and they're going to be some mountaintop experience and all in between but we we ought to pray without ceasing uh i believe this has to do situ situationally uh we we ought to pray we are not give up we are not to throw in the towel we don't have to drink all that alcohol <laughs> yes not. i know it's holidays but we, we don't have to overindulge in something to think that we're easing the pain right we don't have to get into any type of narcotics um, mm -hmm. to, to try to ease the pain. Uh, there's someone that we can go to. Uh, there's someone that we can talk to. Uh, and the Apostle Paul, he says that we ought to pray. And so when you, we begin to delight in the Lord, that's rejoice evermore, um, delight in his favor, we have a lot to pray about. Because if you think about what his favor is, uh, you'll have an appreciation. Brothers, when we talk about God's favor, it's receiving something that we don't deserve. That's mm. what his favor is. It's by his grace. It's, it's his favor. It's unmerited. It, it's receiving something that we don't deserve. Now, 
We know we've been to Sunday school. We know for the wages of sin is death. But then it goes on in that verse in Romans that but the gift of God, God is, a, is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So we have received Christ Jesus. We didn't deserve it. We didn't earn it. We couldn't purchase that. Uh, by his grace, we are saved. And so we have something that we can rejoice about. We, and this is something that we ought to thank God. And, and this, 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 brothers, this passage really helps me because it was a time that my dad, my dad, my parents still living. I was there in Chicago with them for Christmas. Um, and it was a time that he called and asked me uh, about prayer. How does he, how can how do I pray? What should I say? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I suggested, I'm not no expert, <laughs> but I've been in ministry for some time and I have watched and I have seen people do it and it makes sense. But mm -hmm. one of the things, the first thing is you thank God. Mm -hmm. I, don't care what, I don't care what situation it is. You give him some honor, some praise, some glory, you know, yes. uh, you, you give, you give, you give to him. Uh, because if, if, if you're going to be helpful to someone, uh, you have to uh, do something, say something that's going to take their minds off their current situation, yes. take their minds off their problems and put their mind on a problem solver. So Paul says, pray without ceasing. Um, he, he, he says this, he said this to him, it's ceasing. And, and so it's not the picture you always pray every, every second, because that's impossible. Uh, but it's all, but it's, it's, it's praying uh, and prayer, having prayer as an, uh, uh, an essential component in your life. You wake, you woke up this morning, uh, you, you know, the old song, woke up this morning with my mind. That's old school. Y'all might be in these new contemporary <laughs> churches. They ain't, they're not going to see that, but it stayed on Jesus. It, it, it's waking up and thanking God, giving, saying something, you know, giving him something, whether it's audible or whether you, you just, you, you're thinking in your mind. But it, it's, it's those type of things. As you go through your day, when it's time to eat, brothers, you, mm. you're thanking God. You, you take your time out because God has provided, even, even in the loss of a job, <laughs> even Amen. in the loss of uh, fina financial struggles, he, yes. he still provided. You know, it, he, he we owe him something, brothers. We owe him something. Um, relationships that we didn't have and, and whether they started, we, we owe him something for that or they ended. We owe him something for, uh, for that because he's sovereign. And so Paul says, pray without ceasing. Mm. And so finally, mm. brothers, in this verse 18, so much more here. You can read through these passages of scripture. I promise it, it reads better than what I can teach you. Y'all smile. But in verse 18, in everything, give thanks. Now, see, that's a mouthful. That's verse 18. In everything give thanks and everything just just imagine if uh the, I, this young generation today had this attitude had this mindset yes everything give thanks you know um i was growing up brother randy and people always said i was i was spoiled maybe so my parents i, I believe they did spoil me but mm -hmm. they taught me how to give thanks yes sir you know and everything uh the good the bad <laughs> the ugly and everything and, and this this takes some some growing up here, brothers, right here. This takes some growing, growing up because what about the situation that you you struggling with forgiving someone? Mm. Now, yes, sir. Paul said, "In everything, give thanks." We don't have time to hold a grudge. You know, when we talk about forgiveness, brothers, let me slide this in. Um, we try to do sometimes some things that God don't even do. We 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 want to forget it. God don't forget. You think he you think he got dementia, Alzheimer's? No, he lays it aside and deal with you. Lay our sin aside and take us away from the sin and deal with us away from the sin. And and that brothers, that's what we have to do. If we want to give thanks in all things, we have to be able to have a forgiving spirit. Yeah, you're not gonna. There's some things that people have done to you and will do in the future that you're just not gonna forget. You know, unless you hit your head or something or, or you psych yourself out. But regardless of that, despite of that, Paul said everything give thanks. There's probably something positive that came out of that. You you could take you could take the, the worst situation. And, and and but he says everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And so this is why I titled it a subject that um, the will of God uh, for man, um, the will of God. Uh, we need to know this, brothers. Um, and just like in verse 16 and verse 17, and everything, 
give thanks in verse 18, this is also a command. It is also, it also uses the same verbal action of we ought to continuously do this, to give thanks. And you might be asking the question, what does it mean to give thanks? Well, this is to acknowledge what God has done in your life. <laughs> this mm. is the, the knowledge that grace we talked about, the stuff receiving something that 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 uh we we didn't work for, we didn't earn. <laughs> uh, this is to acknowledge that. Uh, this is to acknowledge what we have gained by being in Christ Jesus. Uh, this is, you know, when you think about the goodness, you know, when we think about all the things, all the benefits, when we think about that, he would never leave us nor forsake us. This, this is this is what we ought to give thanks about. When, when you, we think about that, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. This is something of that we ought to, why we ought to give him thanks. When we think about the families he allowed for us to grow up in. He, he If we were married or we divorced or whatever situation, we, we think about these things, how God sovereignly moved in our lives. This is why we ought to give him thanks. And this is what the apostle Paul, he says, in everything, give thanks. Uh, we don't get to cherry pick it, you know, in basketball, you know, I don't know if y'all brothers play. I used to play. I don't play anymore. I retire injured, injured, free, injury free. <laughs> I smile. But, you know, you used to have lazy players out there cherry picking. You know, mm -hmm. y'all know what cherry picking is. I won't play no defense. Mm -hmm. But want to play offense, brother Randy, brother Wade. They want to they play no defense. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I ain't like playing with brothers like that. Don't want to play no defense, you know. But but anyway, so. So just as that, we can't cherry pick what we want to get thanks for. Paul said in everything, in everything, you know, in everything, we ought to give some thanks. And he said, this is the will of God in Christ. So we could do, have a will, W-I-L-L, -L, but the question this morning, brothers, is, is the will of God in Christ Jesus. You know, it, it's something about being in Christ. Huh? We're a new creature. Mm -hmm. You know, behold, all things become new. Old things pass away. Behold, all, all things become new. It's something about being in Christ. Let your light show shine before men so they may see your good works so that your heavenly father may be glorified. It's something, brothers, about being in, in Christos. That's what it is in the Greek New Testament, in Christos, in Christ. It's something. Being in Christ is different than being in Muhammad. It's different than being in Buddha. It's different than being in any other religion that don't report to Christ Jesus. Being in Christ, we have some benefits. And because we are in Christ, we are filled with God, the Holy Spirit. This is how we can rejoice evermore. This is how we can pray without ceasing. This is how in everything we give thanks because the Spirit of God is inside of us. And the Spirit of God has empowered us. And so, brothers, this is the will of God for men or for man, men, man. And so I pray that this was uh, helpful for you, that we ought to, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15, rejoice evermore. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. And verse 18, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen and amen.